Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. said, See, I'm setting up one line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate. The sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to the king Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from this land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today, on page 709 book of common prayer is Psalm 85, verses 8 through 13. We will read responsibly, responsibly by half verse. 
I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him. And that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. And our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him. And peace shall be a pathway for the seed. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glory, glorious grace, that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things to him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things, according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope in Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sequence hymn uh, today is 295. <laughs> Herod had married her. 
For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my God, my Redeemer. Amen. Before I get started with my sermon today, I want to address what happened in our nation yesterday. A political candidate, a former president, had an attempted assassination attempt. It's heart-wrenching. No matter where you are on the political spectrum, this type of behavior is unacceptable. Four sitting presidents have been killed in these type of attacks and three injured, including Donald Trump. There are numerous other documented attempts in our history as a nation. Most of these are motivated by a desire to change the policy of the American government, some for other reasons, personal, and or mental derangement. I want to stand here today and say to you as my congregation that this is not okay and it is never okay. We will pray for former President Trump this morning in our prayers for the people and we'll pray for the family of the man who lost his life and for those who are injured. That that we have come to this point of division in our nation once again is grievous. I ask that we as a parish commit to paying prayer 18 in the Book of Common Prayer on page 820. Book of Common Prayer at page 820. In addition to praying for the former President Trump and these families. I also want to say to you to guard your words and your heart in the coming weeks. I do know as I look out here that I'm preaching to the choir That being said, watch your words. Watch your memes on Facebook. These are humans, and this is our country. God's people are called to love our neighbors as ourselves, and our words and our actions should reflect this love. So 820, number 18, at the end of the prayers for the people. Who's doing prayers for the people for me this morning? 
I will, my concluding collect will be that prayer, and we'll all turn to it together. The problem with prophets is that they speak, and they're called to speak hard things to people who do not want to hear them. It did not end well for John the Baptist, who is considered the last prophet in our gospel reading today. John had been telling King Herod that it was not lawful for him to have his brother's wife, and the wife, Herodias, had a grudge against him, and it just didn't end well for John at all. When given the opportunity, Herodias had her daughter ask for John's head on a platter. Speaking truth to those who do not want to hear it requires courage, because you know it's not going to be received well. You don't really think that you're going to lose your head for it, but you could lose your job, your friends, and support from those to whom your words have offended. Speaking truth has become rare, as truth has become more and more relative to our society, and appearing non-offensive has become more valued than truth. In our quest to be tolerant, we've lost the ability to speak to others. Our fear of offense has bound us to the God of tolerance. Now, tolerance is good. We do need to be more understanding, more loving, more tolerant of those around us who are different than us, but not tolerant to the extent that we ignore sin and whitewash or exonerate sin. Prophets in the Bible were men and women who taught truth and interpreted and brought the word of God to the people. They called people to repentance and received revelations and directions from God. They're often given visions and see the future to warn the people of future events. They continually denounce injustice, adultery, and empty rituals. They're preachers but they're also whistleblowers, warning when a tribe or nation had turned against God. Their primary role was to let kings know the will of God. Amos was one such prophet. If you've not read the book of Amos, I encourage you to read all of it this week. It's a short book. He's referred to as a minor prophet primarily just because of the length of his book. He was a Judean who lived in Tekoa, a small village 12 miles south of Jerusalem, but he prophesied in Israel far to the north. And he wasn't a professional prophet, he was a shepherd, and he tended fruit trees. He had received three visions, and after the first two, Amos asked God to relent of his judgment upon the nation of Israel, and God did. Today's passage is the third vision, that of a plumb line. Does everyone know what a plumb line is? All you builders? No. <laughs> it functions, to, a plumb line has a fairly clear purpose. It shows a builder that the wall is vertically straight during construction. The end of the line is weighted, and you can tell by looking at the end of the line how your walls are measured up. In Amos's vision, God had set a plumb line in the midst of Israel and the people did not measure up. The people had failed to embrace God's idea of justice. They're selling off needy people for goods, they're taking advantage of the helpless, they're oppressing the poor, and the men were using women immorally. So Amos let the people know that God was going to rise up against them, against the house of Jeroboam, King Jeroboam's kingdoms, and this time, in this third vision, God does not relent. The priest, Amaziah, did not like this vision too much. And he told the king what Amos had said, or rather he said, don't you like how information gets repeated? Amos has conspired against you. He tries to soften the blow. And Amaziah, the priest, told Amos to flee and to never again prophesy at Bethel. Who wants a prophet around repeating his negativity to the people. Amos left, but his vision did prove to come true. Thirty years after he spoke, the Assyrians conquered Israel and they ceased to exist. So what is it that we learn from Amos that we can take from today's passages? One, 
that God can be persuaded to relent, but God's patience is not limitless. This is hard to reconcile with the knowledge of God's mercies being new every morning. It's part of our unknowing and holding everything in a balance, and it can be uncomfortable. I was raised on systematic theology, which means we try to explain and have answers for everything to make sure that we fit scripture into systematic, understandable boxes. The problem is, is that the God that we learn of in the Bible is not readily contained in these neat boxes. As we grow and mature, we learn that we have to hold tensions in our faith and we embrace the mystery. So God can be persuaded to relent, prayer, talking with God, but God's patience is not limitless. That being said, God's mercies are new every morning, and you can begin again. Two, God requires us to provide justice and mercy and to protect the poor and the vulnerable. God's not interested in our worship when the poor are suffering. Amos 5.21, I take no pleasure in your solemn assemblies when you bring me burnt offerings and oblations I do not accept them. Spare me the din of your chanting. Let me hear none of your strumming leers, but let justice flow like water and uprightless like a never failing stream. Amos 5, 23 and 24. God understood that providing justice and mercy and protecting the poor and the needy and not taking advantage of others very seriously. St. John Chrysostom said, if you cannot find Christ in the beggar at the church door, you will not find him in the chalice. Caring for the poor and acting justly in our actions toward others was not just a suggestion. God requires it of his children. And the third thing that we can learn from Amos is when God commissions you or God calls you, you must speak no matter who you are. The Lord consistently chooses and uses the foolish of the world to confront the wise, the weak of the world to confound things which are strong, 1 Corinthians 1.27. But I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, Amos says. I'm a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. I am no prophet but the Lord took me. The book of Amos is a hard word. It is part of scripture. It teaches us more about God. It teaches us that right worship of God is based on how we are as humans, that who we are and how we treat others around us, how we promote justice and care for the needy and the poor is more important to God than our ritual worship. In our baptismal vows, we as Episcopalians commit ourselves to striving for justice and peace among all people and respecting the dignity of every human being. And so questions for us to ponder is, how are we doing this? What systems may we need to look at that may need restoration and, and repair? Are we just in our interactions with others and do we demand it? How do our lives and giving show that we respect the dignity of every human being and that we care for the poor and the oppressed? Psalm 85, our psalm this morning, is a response of David and the people to God for his goodness as they were restored to their land after the Babylonian captivity, after Assyria had attacked and dispersed them from their land. It's a response of thankfulness for national forgiveness. Psalm 85.1, you have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. And why? Because, 85 verse 10, mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Teach us, O Lord, the balances of mercy and truth. Teach us how to be righteous in our land so that we may obtain your graciousness. Amen.
recite the words of the Nicene Creed together, found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God of not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he was crucified in your conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are formed five. Please kneel or be seated if you are able. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, The Lord have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. The Lord have mercy. For our bishops, Michael, Sean, Mark. Gail and James, for Jennifer, a rector, for Diocese Convention Centers, Shrinemont and Roslyn, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy for the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance May grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, for those in the congregation celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, including Alan Walton, Ken McGarrett, Jenny Fiber, Linda Barnett, Fields Craig, and Mark and Sharon Boyd. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart, and show forth your glory in all we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all who we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy 
peace and health. We pray for Alan and Lisa, Warren and Peg, Carol, Charlotte, Anne, Chester, Charlotte, Kristen, Paula, Joe, W.A., Anna, Reverend Park, the Burling family, Ken, Janet, John, and Nancy. For those in military service, Garrett, Hope, Zachary, Terry, Holly Ann, Nicholas, and John, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, especially Brenda Purcell, Nora Rigsby, and Daphne Stone Cook, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that with James and all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. O Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. And Lord, we lift up to you this day former President Trump. We ask that you touch his body and that you bring healing. Lord, we ask for the family of those who lost their son and brother and husband, that you comfort them. We pray for those who were injured. Lord, for our country, almighty God, page 820, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honor, industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people, the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. And you, with the spirit of wisdom, those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to thy law, we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have had mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
good to see you all here on this morning, which is going to prove to be another warm day. <laughs> Announcements are on the back of your bulletin. Please read them. We are selling barbecue. The sign-up sheet is in the back. All proceeds will go to the Louisa County Emergency Fund. Also in the back, there's a few more, um, if you're interested in helping out with backpacks, there's a few more little lists with what's needed for a backpack. If it's too much for one of you, pair up with a friend and, and create a backpack. For Children's Health Partners, is that right? <laughs> it goes to support Children's Health Partners who do great work in our community and around, so grab one of those. Any other announcements this morning? We did have a great vacation Bible school with over 20-some children. It's always a joy. It's a joy to see them growing and changing each year. So thanks to all who served and were there. And so our own Linda Boxley and our own Linda Barnett, a lot of our people, there would have been no vacation Bible school without it is true. the St. James people this year. So thank you. Thank you all. It was a lovely time. Um, special calendar, Wednesday, July 31st. We're going to have a noonday prayer service here. If you've never attended noonday prayer, this is a great time. It's a short service. It's it's made to be done at noon. We're going to do it at noon, and then Patty Driscoll is going to give us a short history of St. James Episcopal Church, and we'll go into the fellowship hall and have some refreshments. So if you're around on Wednesday, July 31st, we'd love to have you here. I changed up the offering thing, so I got to look at it. <laughs> Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other.
God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you in the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. 
Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <laughs>
and ever living God. We thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Be careful as you go out into God's creation, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourself and with one another, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High God. Be alert and hesitant, for sometimes God is but a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. <laughs>